Happy anniversary! It was two years ago, last week, that we released our first episode of Average Joe, and uh, it's pretty crazy that it's been two years. Um, it's just flown by, and it's been so exciting to see the growth of the show, and and how many of you guys have become fans and, and enjoy watching the show, and, and I'm uh, just really humbled by the whole, the whole process. Um, it's been a crazy run, and we have a long way to go. I'm just so happy and um, overjoyed. Thank you guys for allowing us to continue to do it and providing the feedback and the support, both financially and just by sharing it and liking the videos and commenting and all that stuff keeps us going. I talked about it before, but the show really just came out of a, a necessity to create something, and uh, I had no idea when we first started shooting three years ago it took a year to film season one, um, that uh, it would turn into what it is now, which has just given me a sense of purpose, and um, it's just been incredibly rewarding. I hope you guys really enjoyed the last short we put out uh, this past Wednesday, Flirting with Disaster. Uh, I had a blast working with Laura Hughes as well as Josh Wade. Um, if you haven't seen Josh Wade's uh, YouTube channel, you should definitely check it out. Uh, you can click it right now. Um, he's really funny and a really good guy, and we had so much fun filming that. Uh, and that was actually based, uh, I mentioned last episode that uh, I spent five months traveling all over the country, and during that time I needed to make money, so I actually worked as an Uber driver, and so I drove, you know, hundreds of people all over Charlotte, North Carolina. I definitely picked up some, like, angry couples, you know, that were upset about flirting and uh, were in fights, and one would sit up front and one in the back, and it was all very tense, and I was just stuck in the middle of it. I'm super excited about this upcoming week's short, um, Date Flake. Uh, it stars Dia Frampton, who, first and foremost, is just an awesome person, and I really enjoyed getting to know her. Uh, but also, she was the runner-up on season one of The Voice. So yeah, that one will be dropping next Wednesday. And uh, we were filming yesterday... Uh, another short with a great YouTuber named Dang Matt Smith. Uh, we were shooting in my old apartment. I just moved. So I'm in a new place now, which needs to be uh, put together still. But there's some stuff there and some stuff uh, mainly just, oh, oh, there's a bookshelf. Oh, that's exciting, right? So anyway, I knew I was going to have an empty apartment. So I tried to, I wrote something that revolved around having an empty apartment. Thank you to the nine people who have signed up to support us on a monthly basis on Patreon. That is incredible. Um, it's just very humbling and gratifying to know that um, you guys enjoy our work enough to, to help us uh, pay for all these things that we're doing. You know, you guys as an audience are probably used to YouTubers posting once a week or more. Um, and... Regardless of what you're shooting, it's not easy to film something once a week, and I don't want to take anything away from, from other YouTubers, but I think what we're doing is especially challenging because it's not just a webcam, you know, it's, it's multiple actors and locations and props and, and everything else. You know, the cool thing is, is that when you give us money on Patreon, that's going directly into the, sh the short that we're shooting that week. So you can give us money, and then several weeks later, You'll watch a short and see some crazy prop or costume that we bought, and that was thanks to you. So you were directly responsible for the success of this show. Like, we're all in this together. I thank you so much to the nine who have already donated, and uh, yeah, even if it's just a dollar a month, we really, we really appreciate it. So, now uh, I wanted to answer a couple of questions that you guys left in the uh, comment section from the first video. Our first question comes from Kat uh, via YouTube. And she says that she's 17 and studies media production at college, wanted to know what age I was when I got interested in the subject, and what inspired me to take it on as a career path. For me, I, I, what age did I start? I started when I was like six, doing theater. I signed up, or I guess my mom signed me up for like an acting class, and then at the end of the class we put on a play. And the play was uh, Sleepy Hollow, and I was Braun Bones, and I remember I forgot my line. And I guess most people would probably be like anxious or nervous or embarrassed by that. But um, I could feel a few audience members snickering as I was just standing there looking like an idiot. And hearing them laugh was kind of like a drug. And so then I just purposely kept forgetting my lines and the poor instructor had to like shout them from the side of the stage to me. 
and people were laughing more and more. And I think from that point on, I just knew that I wanted to make people laugh. And I liked, I just liked it. I really enjoyed it. And so I did theater for years. The film side of it really caught on when uh, summer going into my junior year of high school, um, my college that I ended up graduating from, the North Carolina School of the Arts, they have a five-week summer program for high school students where you get to write, direct, produce, edit, act uh, in your own short films. And so I did that, and I just loved the collaboration and um, the camaraderie and just being able to, to make things. And then, you know, a couple weeks later, you have something done and finished that you can watch any time. I still watch those every now and then. Brie wants to know if I've lost weight because I look good. Brie, you're a doll. Thank you. Uh, I've been doing a little working out. Josh wants to know how I met Andy Beersack, who is on the show, uh, and also the lead singer of Black Bell Brides. I met him at birth, essentially. We are cousins, and we've been putting on silly performances since we were little kids, so it's, it's a lot of fun uh, to collaborate on the show and do essentially what we did when we were kids, but on a, on a bigger level. And then, yeah, I, just, I met the other band members through going to concerts early on and and getting to know them. Uh, Danny Warsnop was just through Twitter. You know, I, I was going through people in sort of the rock world that I thought might be good on the show. So I reached out to him and he instantly was like, hell yeah, man, I'd love to be on the show. And uh, he was a lot of fun to work with. And hopefully, yes, he will be back in season three. He said he's down. So just got to figure out the best way to throw him in there. Tia also goes to the North Carolina School of the Arts. What up, girl? Fighting pickles all the way! That's actually our mascot, look it up. The Awkward Soul wants to know, so far of all the episodes, what's been my favorite and why. I'd have to go with season two, episode 12, when The Waitress comes back. I think that was so much fun to film and that was a real collaboration between myself and Andy and Patrick Fogarty and Lee Page um, and Daryl Delaney and all the guys that we usually work with. But I think that one really, you know, I was really happy when, with the script that I wrote for it and all the little pieces that everybody else brought into it. Uh, I think that's the most epic episode so far, and the numbers would suggest that it's also um, all of you guys' favorite episode. Zachary Little says that we should do an Average Joe Google Hangout, and funny you should say that because back us on Patreon by clicking that link, and one of the things we do is we'll have a monthly hangout to uh, our Patreon subscribers. So check it out. Emma Hawkins wants to know if there are any actors, random people, that I want to be on Average Joe. Um, yes, there's plenty. Off the top of my head, uh, I talked with William Control the other day, and, um, we tried to get him on season two, but we couldn't figure out the schedule, but, uh, I know he's on board for season three, so I really want to, I'm excited to work with him, and then, uh, I'd love to throw Ronnie Radke into the mix. I think he's such an interesting person, uh, who's done so many different things creatively. Jake Mail TV wants to know if we've thought about shooting Average Joe in the UK, and the answer is Yes. I've got several different versions of the first scene of uh, Season 3, Episode 1, and in one of those versions, it does have Joe in London. So I'm trying to figure out which one I want to go with, and of course, getting to London would be expensive. Donate here, and uh, work with some UK YouTubers, and um, kind of open up a whole new world of people to collaborate with. So hopefully, yes, we'll be in the UK one day. Sheila wants to know how long I want to keep shooting Average Joe, and the answer is indefinitely. Really, when we kind of sat down with myself and Patrick and Lee and Daryl, uh, when we sat down and talked about season two, I think the goal was to eventually get this thing on TV. If you're rational about it, you realize that this doesn't happen overnight and we aren't going to go from where we are right now to just instantly on TV. There's going to be a lot of steps in the, in the process that get us there. And um, we are encountering a lot of those little steps. And so it's really exciting. There's a lot of momentum towards the show. We're hoping that after we put out, you know, shorts indefinitely and then we put out season three next summer that we'll have a body of work that can at least get us into some meetings with the right people and try and get the ball rolling on getting this thing on the air so to answer your question we're not going away anytime soon alexandra andrea i think i got that right alexandra andrea yes hello uh wants to know if any of the uh romance stories on the show are based on my life or whether the whole concept is based on my life. Um, it's a combination of both. I think some of the love interests on the show, like the, the girl in episode one of season two, sort of crazy druggy, that was based on somebody that I briefly dated and did take to a New Year's party in real life, and it was a disaster. So that episode 
It's not verbatim, but there's a lot of truth in that episode. As far as the whole show being sort of based on my life, I would say half of the episodes are based on my life, and half are just pure imagination. And even the ones that are based on my life, usually there's some sort of, there's something that really happened in life, and then I take that moment or event and then just put it on steroids for the sake of the show. Paul is a derp, wants to know if uh, we'll be doing the Dusty Diamond Chronicles. And for those of you who don't know, Dusty Diamond is a porn star alias that I sometimes go by. The answer is yes, we would love to shoot the Dusty Diamond Chronicles. We have eight episodes written, but, and I hate to say it, we don't have the money to shoot it. So all of our efforts are being sort of focused on Average Joe. But if you donate, then we'd have the money to shoot other things like the Dusty Diamond Chronicles. And you can also click here to watch Eight and a Half Inches, which was the... Uh, basis of Dusty Diamond. Kirsten Hunt wants to know if it's a bad thing that she watched seasons one and two in one day. No, it's not a bad thing. It's a fantastic thing. I hope you enjoyed them. Messy Messum, did I get it right? Uh, wants to know how many episodes are we planning for season three? Now this might change, but I would say 13 to 14 episodes. And uh, I'm writing those now. Ugh. It is a lot of work writing the seasons and well, writing the shorts as well that we're doing right now. Kayla wants to know when we release season three, are we going to do them all, are we going to release them all the same day like we did with season two, or if we're going to space them out? And that's a good question, and we're still sort of toying with that. Um, what we may end up doing is releasing two back to back every week. So if we have 14, then it would basically be a seven week run, and every week we'd release two episodes. Okay, guys, I've got to go run and finish unpacking and writing and shooting and editing and uh, a lot. Um, so I'm sorry if I didn't get to your question this week, but just post it again uh, in the comments section and I will try my best to get to it next week. Um, yeah, look forward to the new short dropping next Wednesday starring Dia Frampton. I'm really excited about it. We're putting the finishing touches on that one right now. And uh, donate to Patreon to help us out. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. It's time for some mac and cheese.